What's up YouTube, Ian Tandowski back here again for Let's Machine. Today we're going to be going through some really basic fourth axis stuff. We're not going to do any surfacing as it turns. We're actually not even going to program it in Mastercam as fourth axis. We're going to program it in three axis and then convert it to fourth axis. Uh, this isn't really super advanced stuff. This is just, if you have a job you need to get done, um, it's not too complicated. This is the one way that you can do it. So what we're doing today, we have these aluminum pieces we turned on the Haas ST20 lathe previously. Um, as you can see, there's some round portions here and obviously a bell and a globe. Now for this program, uh, to finish this part, we need to turn all these uh, round portions here into squares. These are going into a gate, so they have square tines in the gate um, and they want this to match when it screws in there. So what we're gonna do, we're going to face these down into squares, and then as well, there's some 1 8 ball nose uh, tool pass we're gonna put along here for some engraving. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. This is a quick and dirty way to do it. Um, there are obviously better ways to do it if you know how, but this is kind of the quick and dirty way to do it. Okay, let's take a look. Let's see what we can do. So we're gonna be working inside the Haas Automation uh, BF5. Again, this is one of my favorite machines to use that we have here, it's one of the newer ones. Uh, it's also got our biggest table on it. Um, it's one of our two machines here with fourth axis, uh, fourth axis, fourth axis capability. Um, this is a standard issue Haas fourth axis rotary. Um, nothing special about it. What we've done is we've taken a chuck off an old lathe and we've put it on the plate. Uh, we've turned a little thing on the lathe, a little uh, aluminum piece that has the inner diameter of the chuck on one side and the inner diameter of the plate on the other. So that way when you put that in, it automatically lines it up within a couple thou. This is kind of an ugly clamping job, but nobody really cares for what we're doing today. The other thing we have here, if you actually can see it, is an old center off, I believe it could even be the same lathe. Um, Obviously this isn't the most technological thing in the world. This is kind of old school, quick and dirty, get the job done type machining. Um, standard center, it's a dead center, not a live center, so you gotta grease it up. But uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do is previously we machined these. What these are, are little pieces with a center in them that I can put on the lathe on one side and can screw into the part on the other. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna screw these in here, like so. Make sure it gets nice and flush. This is just to hold it out so I can machine right to the end here and I don't have to worry about you know holding anything in the chuck. Um, the other thing you could do is leave more material on the part and uh, machine it off afterwards, but I mean, if you don't have to do it, let's save operations. These were pretty easy to do. The other thing we did is we put a shoulder on these here. So whenever you put it in the chuck, it automatically stops up against that, so you don't have to pick up the zero every time. You always know where it's going to be. So you're going to put that in the chuck, turn the center into it, like so. Snug it up just a little bit. You don't want to put any real pressure on it until you tighten it up. Tighten the chuck up. Now we're going to put some pressure on it, because that's going to be our support. Tighten that down. Now you can see, I mean, it's turning nice and straight. We already indicated it. Let's go program it. I'll show you how we're going to do this. We're going to have to do a little code compilation in there. So, let's take a look. So here we are. I'll show you my model. This is a model from the customer. Um, I ended up remodeling it because it has some problems. As you can see, it's uh, got some holes in it. But we're going to go from these, uh, go from the round portions to these square portions. Um, and then later we're gonna go ahead and do this 1 8 uh, ball nose path So I redrew the geometry just some flat geometry here uh, I'm using squares just because I want to do it as a pocket. Uh, it's personal preference I want it to cut across as opposed to this way. This gives me a couple more options than uh, using contours So I went ahead and I programmed it Just like so Go ahead post it It'll pop up here now Here is my first side this won't be in here my normal geometry will come out or my normal code will come out just like this so I'm gonna put in a few lines so we can uh, we can find it again easily 
I'm going to put in the note for size, so I know which one it is. Now, I want to make sure that this is going to go to A0 when I start it. I want to make sure it's starting at A0, not just some random position where I may have it jogged. So I'm going to go rapid motion, absolute position, A0. Make sure you put your decimal in. All I'm going to do is copy this, because this is my program for one side in three axis. Copy this. After I've done that, all I'm going to do is paste it. As you can see, I've added the note here, second side. And instead of A0, now it's going to be A90. So now it's going to go ahead and move to A90. As I repeat this, go down to third side, fourth side, it'll end up doing the same program. So see, I can change this now to third side, G90, A270. So I wanted to go around. Oh, sorry, it's going to be 180. Um, it's going to make that square because I'm repeating the same program four times. Now, if I was doing something that was triangular, obviously the uh, A would be different. You just need to figure out what the A value is. So it's repeating the same program. I mean, you could use subprograms if you like. Um, I don't really like using subprograms. I don't know why. I just never really did. Uh, it's easier just for me to visualize in uh, code like this. So yeah, after I post it, go down to the machine and it should run just fine. Now for the second portion of this, we want to do uh, essentially some surfacing. I want to put those ridges in. So all I'm doing is I'm using a parallel tool path with one eighth ball nose. Um, I did end up cutting out this. I don't know why it was doing a separate plunge. I ended up cutting this out from my actual program. So it plunges down to about here, or, uh, feeds down to about here before plunging into the part. Um, there's 16 of these. So if we take 360 divided by 16, 22 and a half degrees. So when I go ahead and uh, copy paste my program in the G code for this, I'm going to have it rotate uh, 22 and a half degrees per time. Now you could use relative position and go 22 and a half. I like to always use absolute position for this stuff. Um, I find it's just less chance for error, but personal preference. Again, you can use sub programs. Uh, you could have a sub program where it just automatically rotates 22 and a half degrees and repeats the program. Nothing wrong with that. Um, in my opinion, as long as it's not unsafe, it's not wrong uh, when it comes to machining. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to smash these two programs together, go down, put it in the machine, and let's run it. So there you have it guys, some real basic 4th axis CNC stuff. Um, obviously there are better ways to do this if you have the capability, um, if you have a better steady grass or something. You know, there's a million different ways to do things. This is just an easy way if you got to bang out some quick and dirty 4th axis work. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you have any questions, again, you can always email me. My email is letsmachine at gmail.com. Um, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe below. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.